our top stories this hour. There will be no disruptions in oil exports. The energy minister told how the pipeline repair works on the Caspian Sea are progressing. The country's food security is under special control. The anti-crisis team developed a number of reforms in the agro-industrial complex. The best of the best were awarded in Turkey for their significant contribution to the development of Turkey culture and art. Stay tuned! To reduce import dependence, Kazakhstan will adopt a program to develop its own seed varieties. All this is being done as part of building up domestic food security. This became known at a regular meeting of the anti-crisis team chaired by Prime Minister Alihan Smailov. The development of new varieties of seeds that are resistant to drought and give a greater volume of produce is of paramount importance, the head of the cabinet of ministers said. In addition, in order to timely supply inventory items for agricultural production, the Ministry of Industry and Infrastructure Development and Kazakhstan Timurjolu Railway Company were instructed to provide additional rolling stock and work out the issue of alternative supply routes for seed imports. One of the remote birthing units at the Caspian Pipeline Consortium, or CPC, has started operating, Kazakh Energy Minister Bulat Akchulakov announced at a press briefing. According to him, this can help avoid significant losses in oil production. Akchulakov also reported that the remaining two birthing facilities will be repaired in two to three weeks. Due to a severe storm in the Black Sea, there was an accident at TLU-3, which led to a complete shutdown. For a few days our fields can work for a tank farm. After that, if the situation with the repair of the TLU at the port of Novorossiysk drags on, it may lead to a reduction in production at all of our three large fields. However, on the positive side, yesterday we had technical consultations with our colleagues. Today there is information that TLU-1 will operate normally starting today. As for TLU-2 and TLU-3, we hope that our colleagues will complete the repair works within three weeks. Kazakhstan lifted some coronavirus restrictions amid the stabilizing epidemic situation in the country. Thus, citizens are now allowed not to wear masks in all the indoor premises except for medical institutions. At the same time, it is still recommended to wear PPE in crowded places, in public transport and in groups. In addition, the list of those who can receive the Pfizer vaccine is expanding. This category now includes individuals who are about to get vaccinated for the first time and those who intend to be revaccinated in order to travel abroad. In addition, the list includes those who want to complete the vaccination course started abroad and all population groups undergoing revaccination against COVID. In the meantime, according to the latest data from the health ministry, Kazakhstan reported 22 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours. Almaty accounts for the highest single-day case load in the country. Eight new infections were recorded in the city in the past day. Four new cases were reported in the North Kazakhstan region, while the East Kazakhstan and Kostanay regions detected two new cases each. Since the onset of the pandemic, total COVID-19 19 cases in the country have passed 1,305,000. Over 5,000 residents are currently receiving treatment for coronavirus. More than 500 of them are in inpatient care. To date, over 9,131,000 Kazakh citizens have been fully vaccinated against the virus with two doses. 3,153,000 people have received their booster shots. Germany reported record high of over 300,000 new COVID infections in the past day. This is the highest figure since the beginning of the pandemic. Experts attribute the new peak of the disease in European countries to the sharp relaxation of measures as well as the rapid spread of the Omicron variant. Compared to its neighbors, Germany only lifted the remaining COVID restrictions last weekend. At the federal level, the unvaccinated people no longer have to take a coronavirus test in order to get to work. Mass events have also been allowed in the country starting last weekend. However, many regions decided to maintain some measures until April 2nd due to the increase in the number of infections. The country's authorities are also urging its citizens to get vaccinated. According to the latest data, 23% of German residents are still unvaccinated.
I think that a large number of infected people is not such a serious problem. After all, so many people have already been vaccinated and they mostly develop mild symptoms. Moreover, many have already had COVID and recovered. We need to try to get back to normal. But I believe that the mask rule should remain in place. This is a protection that actually does not hurt everyday life. I think that COVID restrictions should remain in public transport and hospitals, and it is time to leave the outdoor ones. And of course, it's very good that they lifted the mandatory quarantine upon arrival. Personally, for me, staying at home for 10 days and not going anywhere was very difficult. Vitamin D in high doses does not reduce the risk of COVID-19 infection. The UK reported on the results of the third phase of clinical trials for coronavirus prevention. A group of more than 6,000 volunteers was assembled to conduct the experiment. Half of them were regularly tested for vitamin D levels in their bodies and took large doses of the substance in case of its chronic deficiency. The research was kicked off in December 2020 and ended in July 2021. Scientists have not found any significant evidence that increasing vitamin D concentration in the subject's bodies reduce the risk of infection with alpha and delta strains of COVID-19. North Kazakhstan region will provide 650 gratuitous grants for the implementation of new business ideas. This will allow for creating new jobs. Asim Gultashmetova knows how important state support is for startup entrepreneurs. She applied for soft loans and opened her own tailor shop. Next, she plans to expand production. Moreover, the aspiring entrepreneur hopes to win a grant under the business roadmap. <laughs> I completed Bastau training, received a certificate, wrote a business plan and received preferential loans at 6%. More than 400 residents of Magjan Jumabayev district have already received gratuitous financial support from the state. This work will be continued as part of the National Entrepreneurship Development Project. The amount of grants has been doubled from 200 MCI to 400. This year, 46 grants are envisaged so far. Their number may grow. There are categories to whom these grants will be provided in the first place. These are young people under the age of 29, low-income families from among the recipients of targeted social assistance, large families, as well as families raising children with disabilities, also participants in the resettlement program. The number of volunteers has significantly increased in Kazakhstan. According to the single platform, there are more than 3,400 volunteer organizations operating in the country. They have almost 51,000 members. Spouses Andrei and Marina Lutoshkin, residents of the Akmola region, have been volunteers since 2014. They actively participate and also manage volunteer projects and campaigns, including international ones. I would like to point out that volunteering is about doing something of your own free will and not just in the direction you are interested in. This, of course, is an important aspect of volunteering. I am often asked what does it give me. I get huge positive emotions from the people I help. There is no way to measure it. In recent years, the volunteer movement has received great attention and its status is growing. A specially designed mobile application allows quick registration of those wishing to become volunteers and improve their interaction. As soon as you download the application, the first thing that comes out on the smartphone screen is do you need help or do you want to help? If you want to help, then you will need to register as a volunteer. After you have entered all your data, you will receive a notification about those who need help and where. On the one hand, it helps to respond faster to such messages, and on the other, it links those in need and volunteers. Ahmed Baitursinov and Alash, a book dedicated to the 150th anniversary of the Kazakh scientist, educator, public and political figure, as well as the heritage of the Alash movement, was presented in Prague. The work was translated into Czech and English for the first time. It includes the works of prominent figures of Kazakh culture and modern scientists, Alash experts. The meeting participants in their speeches emphasized the special role of Ahmed Baitursinov in the history of Kazakhstan. 
Ja očím rád, že mám kvôli účastvať si vo ničom mieroprijatí i što I'm very glad that I can participate in today's event and that I again have the opportunity to learn more about Baitursinov, who is the famous figure of Kazakhstan, as well as to learn about the history of Alash Orda, which of course was very important. It is an integral part of the history of Kazakhstan. The International Organization of Turkey Culture awarded figures of art and creative teams who made a significant contribution to the development of Turkey culture and art. Gold medals are Baikunan Bayoulu, Nizami Genjavi, Chingis Aitmatov, Khaldun Tanir and Toktogul Satalganov, as well as commemorative badges, were presented to the honored artists for great merits in strengthening friendship between the Turkic-speaking countries. The solemn event was organized in honor of Nowruz, a common holiday for the Turkic world. Арине біздің мынау жасаған жұмысымыз біздің мемлекеттеріміздің арамыздағы жаңағы достығымызды нығайтады. Оның жаңағы келешегі мол деп ойлаймын. Undoubtedly our work strengthens friendship between our countries. I think we have a great future. We perform these concerts in every city, be it Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, the US and even Japan. Every concert leaves its mark. These concerts will remain in the memory of people. They will remember that there is such a Turkic speaking organization which includes countries with a rich cultural heritage. We are also very happy to be a part of the Turkstoy Orchestra. We have many plans ahead of us, many new projects. Құрамында жүргенімізге алдымызда әлі талай жоспарымыз бар, тағыда тұң шығармаларымыз бар. Taking this opportunity, I would like to thank the Turkso organization and Dusen Kasiyinov in particular for the invitation, for the respect and for the award. For me, it was very unexpected. I'm very happy. For me, it was an unexpected surprise, a very nice surprise gift. I love Turkstoy with all my heart. Thank you for appreciating my work and presenting such an award. I sincerely wish prosperity to Turkstoy. The Turk Store organized a two-week program dedicated to Nowruz, in which about 350 artists from Turkic-speaking countries took part. The large-scale event will end with a large gala concert in the city of Bursa, which was recognized as the cultural capital of 2022. The ballet Six Dances by Irzhi Kilian will premiere in the capital of Kazakhstan. This famous work is a masterpiece of modern classics. Despite the fact that the world premiere of the ballet took place 37 years ago, it will be presented in Kazakhstan for the first time. Negotiations started four years ago. The Astana opera artists were preparing for the premiere under the guidance of the maestro's assistants, namely the Czech choreographers Shirla Esabum and Just Bigler. I was happy to work with the Astana Opera Ballet dancers in their rehearsal hall. They are all brilliant, amazing artists with the highest level of technical training. They are all great professionals and do a really great job. Uh, rehearsing with the dance. The ballet lasts no more than 15 minutes, but the complexity of its performance makes the artists show tremendous physical and emotional endurance. The audience will see eight pairs of dancers on stage who will try to convey a comic story to them. It is a great happiness for the artists and for me too, because I have long dreamed that Irji Kilian's ballets would be staged in our theater for Kazakh spectators. Why did we choose this particular ballet? Because it is a masterpiece that is surprisingly easy to perceive, humorous, with comic mimicry, extremely musical and very short. This is an incredible piece. The audience will definitely laugh a lot, and after that they will be able to take some thought and draw their own conclusions. It's worth noting that the Six Dances Ballet will be presented as part of the Gala Ballet program.